Welcome, Michele. You just gave a, 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 a keynote over here at the European Crowdsourcing Week about reinventing the government. Yes. It's quite an uh, interesting topic. Yes. What uh, was the story that you shared today? Yes, I think that uh, today's talk was uh, had a quite an ambitious title because it was about reinventing the government, so about setting the foundations on top of which we can uh, build next generation uh, government. And I think in particular that next generation uh, government has to be on the one hand outcome based, thus having a sound business model underlying governmental operations. And on the other end, it has to be extended. So putting, uh, placing collective intelligence at the heart of problem solving mechanisms. And I think that there is an interdependence existing among those two properties. So a government could become more outcome-based by becoming more extended and leveraging collective intelligence that I think is one of the largest underexploited assets in nowadays society. Collective intelligence I think is everywhere but the government currently is not tapping enough this opportunity. And are there any good examples uh, where governments do use it? Yes, I think that uh, uh, even uh, though uh, govern the crowdsourcing government has not become yet a mainstream, I think that there are some trailblazing examples that uh, can be considered as particularly promising. In particular, today I touched upon a couple of examples coming from the uh, USA federal government. No? So, for instance, uh, the Tapaloozas that are a gas gatherings organized by the USA federal government as intermediary, connecting in a sort of two-sided market. On the one hand, uh, entrepreneurs, data wranglers, data geeks, industry bigwigs, and on the other hand, a myriad of, uh, pub of uh, public agencies looking for solutions to their toughest data conundrum. And Another case in the limelight that I think uh, is a, a promising example in the uh, introduction of crowdsourcing in the government is the one is the one having to do with the challenge.gov that is an open innovation portal used by uh, USA uh, public agencies to crowdsource solutions to complex uh, social technical problems faced by, by the government. So a paradigm that has already been experienced by big companies such as Procter & Gamble that epitomizes disruption in this sense has been put at the heart of uh, complex procurement of the USA government. And I think that it's quite remarkable this. Yeah, but I think one thing that you need is, is transparency. Uh, transparency yes. in, 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 in also in, uh, in your agenda. That's not something uh, uh, what really match uh, with government these days. Mm -hmm. And what way do you think the government can be more transparent to, to also uh, uh, make this crowdsourcing and this all, uh, reinventing the government going faster? Yes, I think that transparency probably could be considered as something at the basis of every uh, democratic uh, government. So uh, there are also uh, papers coming from uh, the, the United Nations or the European Commission saying that uh, uh, good governance is based on transparency. So transparency is one of the uh, key ingredients. So the ingredients having a paramount importance to build a good governance. So transparency for sure is relevant. However, I think that uh, uh, the extended government, so that the, the government that, that today I talked about, mm -hmm. is committed to go beyond transparency. So opening up the government not only for the sake of transparency. Mm -hmm. And in this sense, I think that uh, the, the role of the government may, may be uh, reinvented also looking at how the crowd, how the collective intelligence is engaged. So a massive participation of users going beyond transparency can help to bring new idea, new brain power, new stimuli into the government. And this will result in an entire new breed of services, solutions, ideas and policies that cannot even be conceived in the closed door government, in the ivory towers of government 1.0. So I think that transparency is key, however we have to go beyond transparency. Yeah. And um, it, it has also to do with a long-term vision. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you see in politics like in the Netherlands, 
uh, there's a lot of, the, of discussion about short terms. Uh, uh, so the populism is really uh, rising. Uh, and what way do you think, uh, uh, also with revealing the government, how can we uh, get back to the long-term vision of our government? So I did a trip uh, by talking to the leaders of 20 European brands. And the family brands, they were the most interesting brands because they had the long-term vision. And they were, everything they did was, was making a contribution to the long-term vision. And in what way do you think that governments can learn from family companies? Well, for sure there are some uh, practices coming from, from family companies, uh, such as the long-term uh, vision that could, could become part of the uh, guidelines at the heart of the government uh, agenda and also I think uh, commitment, uh, trust uh, to, uh, with respect uh, to the future, uh, being positive, being optimistic and being uh, convinced that the best is yet to come. This is something that for sure governments can, can borrow from uh, family uh, enterprises. Government for their part, I think that in the long-term vision, they have uh, also to consider that uh, uh, collective intelligence could be uh, ex exploited, could be tapped in several ways. So I think that a sort of holistic approach, uh, combining together the various souls of user uh, engagement uh, should be the uh, long-term destination. So using both participation and also problem solving. So the wide crowdsourcing involving huge community when uh, governments abandon their monopoly over the policy process, but also the so-called wise crowdsourcing. When the, gover when the government can exploit uh, cutting-edge solutions for tackling grand societal challenges, all of this powered by the crowd. And do you think this fits much better with the national government or more with the local government? There are some nice discussions about cities are the new countries because people are not thinking in borders anymore, especially uh, not with crowdsourcing on the internet. For, for which kind of government do you think uh, is a chance that this new government will be successful the biggest, with local governments or with national governments? Well, I think that probably uh, some of the initiatives in the limelight that we had the chance to, to comment in recent years uh, pertain to uh, national governments. Now, so uh, they have been a trailblazing role. Uh, setting the way also from other initiatives performed by uh, local uh, governments. I think that uh, probably the process could be uh, organized in a way that uh, a set of practices coming from various angles on, on, of the globe can mix together in a sort of portfolio, in a sort of library. And then local governments, based on their uh, priorities, on their needs, on their expected outcomes, can selectively pick models, uh, ideas, practices, and make those practices actions of their agenda. So we're saying uh, uh, like a platform where all the best practices are being collected where everybody can use them. Yes, I think that uh, this is uh, a, an opportunity, I think, for uh, combining under a common roof uh, uh, an heterogeneous set uh, of experiences coming from different uh, countries, different cultures, and I think that also conferences like uh, this one can help to create a common ground for sharing experiences and uh, to making uh, crowdsourcing a reality in our government. Great. Let's do it, I say. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.